Hey, welcome back to The Political Vietnamese. I know the last video was a bit long, so we'll cut the length of this one in half. Before each new episode, we'll do a review video of the last one. That way, we can build on some of the vocabulary we learned by exploring it in different contexts. This week, we'll review words by exploring how we name political parties in Vietnamese. Đảng phái chính trị Đảng, meaning party, phái, meaning faction, and chính trị, which we learned last week, means politics or political. So political parties are like teams that fight over who gets to govern. They represent different ideas and support different public policies. That's why a lot of times people say politics is like sports. Except when these teams win or lose, the outcome affects everybody. The winning team or teams then form a country's government, and they try to implement the ideas and policies that they ran on. Alright, so the formula for naming political parties in Vietnamese is relatively simple. It's the word đảng followed by an adjective or the name of the party. So for example, we'll use two words that we learned from the first lesson. Dân chủ and Cộng hòa. Dân chủ meaning democracy or democratic and Cộng hòa meaning republic or republican. When we combine them with đảng, we get the names of the two main political parties in the United States. Đảng Dân chủ, the Democratic Party, and đảng Cộng hòa, the Republican Party. In general, đảng phái chính trị can be divided into two broad categories, left-wing and right-wing. The left wing fights for progressive causes, and they usually push for ideas and policies that advocate change or progress. In the US, Đảng Dân Chủ, the Democratic Party, represents the left wing. In the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, the left wing is represented by Đảng Lao Động, or the Labour Party. In Canada, the left wing is represented by Đảng Tự Do, the Liberal Party. In Taiwan, it's the Democratic Progressive Party, Đảng Dân Chủ Tiến Bộ. The other side is the right wing, which fights for conservative causes. Broadly speaking, these parties support conserving the past, maintaining tradition, or keeping things the way they are. In the US, Đảng Cộng Hòa, the Republican Party, represents the right wing. In the UK and Canada, the right wing is represented by the Conservative Party, Đảng Bảo Thủ. In New Zealand, it's the National Party, Đảng Quốc gia. In Australia, the Liberal Party, Đảng Tự Do inversely represents conservative causes. In Taiwan, it's the Nationalist Party, Quốc Dân Đảng. This tug of war between the forces of tradition and change define much of the politics you see across the world. In Vietnam, however, the context is a little different. There, there's only one party that's allowed to hold power, or even legally exist, Đảng Cộng sản Việt Nam, the Vietnamese Communist Party. The Vietnamese Communist Party is a left-wing party that was established on February 3rd, 1930, in order to build communism in Vietnam. After the Geneva Accords were signed on July 20th, 1954, splitting the country in half at the 17th parallel, the Vietnamese Communist Party ruled over the northern half and tried to impose communism there. It conducted a deadly land reform campaign that killed tens of thousands of people and caused another million to flee south. After April 30th, 1975, the Vietnamese Communist Party then tried to build communism in the southern half of the country, but these efforts ultimately failed as well. In 1986, the party abandoned its ideological roots altogether, pursuing a new economic policy called Đổi Mới, which means renovation. The Vietnamese Communist Party now pushes its own brand of capitalism, which it calls a socialist-oriented market economy. And while the country has reformed economically, it has not reformed politically. All other political parties are illegal, and when elections occur, you can only pick candidates from the Communist Party. Such a setup is still a very contentious issue among both local and overseas Vietnamese, who question whether this stable but intellectually limited system is the best way to govern. Slightly less contentious, but still a good topic of discussion, was the name I proposed for April 30th, Ngày Hòa Bình, the Day of Peace. I'm glad I was able to get people to dig deeper into our history, and I suspect a good portion of the disagreement came about because we each had differing definitions of what peace meant. So in politics, there are actually two kinds of peace. There's negative peace, which is the lack of jinjan or large-scale violence. On the flip side is positive peace. Positive peace is not just the absence of war, but the presence of justice, fairness, and equity. So when I refer to April 30th as the day peace arrived, I'm referring more to negative peace. Whether we have positive peace in Vietnam today is still up for debate. After all, it's been 45 years since the end of the war and we still have not achieved Hoa Yai Yan Tau, or national reconciliation. On top of that, recent judicial cases 
have been perceived as lacking in true justice. I'll wrap up my review of episode one here. I hope this video was helpful in building on the vocabulary you learned the last time. Don't forget to subscribe for the next video, which should be coming out on June 10th.